Many COVID-19 patients are facing breathing trouble in the second wave of pandemic and they are in dire need of external oxygen support. Tamil Nadu is also experiencing a shortage of oxygen at present. The state has a better public health care system compared to many other states in India. But currently, more than 33,000 patients are being admitted per day due to the severity of the COVID-19 infection. According to the statistics of the Department of Health and Family Welfare of the Government of Tamil Nadu, as of 17th May 2021, government hospitals hold 79,161 beds, including with the support of oxygen, non-oxygen and ICU in the state. Of these, 67,191 are occupied and the remaining 11,970 are vacant. But in reality, even in Chennai, the capital city of Tamil Nadu, ambulances can be seen standing in line because of the unavailability of beds. On May 2, 13 patients admitted to the government hospital in Chengalpattu district died because of coronavirus infection. The relatives of the patients accused that the death was caused due to the shortage of oxygen. But the hospital management denied the claim. Following this, the relatives of the patients protested in front of the hospital. After the protest, the district collector assured them of forming a commission to investigate the issue. Similarly, as per a report, in Velu district, four people died in April due to the problems in oxygen supply. Recently, the new Tamil Nadu CM has placed a request to Prime Minister Modi demanding 500 metric tons of oxygen supply per day. Since the demand is increasing, after this, the central government increased the supply from 220 metric tons to 419 metric tons per day. From all these incidents, it is clear that there is a shortage of medical oxygen in Tamil Nadu. But the transparency of the state on deaths caused by the shortage of oxygen is questionable here. Regarding this issue, NewsClick spoke to the public health activist Dr. Kasi. What we face today? It's not the creation of the COVID alone. And um, at the end of uh, first wave, so-called first wave in our country, we should have prepared ourselves for the second wave, number one. And we have failed to implement a lot of uh, programs expecting the need of the need for the people in the health sector. Particularly, we have not made any concrete investments in the public health sector, including building hospitals or uh, building oxygen plants, building and equipping, uh, producing more equipments like ventilators and uh, other things. We failed to build over that. We have failed to utilize the period of lockdown for creation of such an investment and infrastructure in the health. That only made us feel sorry about the today's situation. That's why we are facing the crisis today. What I mean is, and um, whatever they have made was in the previous year, last year, whatever arrangements they have made was all temporary. In some, most of the places they have, not only in Tamil Nadu, throughout India, they have dismantled the makeshift hospitals and the other COVID beds, other things. I'm claiming it is almost over for our country. That's not true. And uh, number two, and um, uh, the, as far as Tamil Nadu and Kerala and uh, states like uh, the southern states are concerned, we are already um, uh, okay with the available oxygen as far as medical oxygen is concerned we have enough um, number of uh, plants for producing to produce uh, oxygen but uh, what happened if demand has rise 100 times 200 times we are facing the crisis and also one point i would like to make uh, since we have not invested on public sector industries now we are not able to get the industrial oxygen converted to
to medical oxygen and because there is a difference between industrial oxygen and medical oxygen. Industrial oxygen is not pure. Medical oxygen should be pure and it should not uh, lead to complications when we use for patients. So, in this industrial oxygen, every industry is some point of time, they will use oxygen, they will produce oxygen, they are capable of producing. But uh, since we have uh, not built the um, uh, public sector companies or uh, factories, we are now facing the crisis. We are not uh, able to get the enough oxygen support from the uh, public, private sector. That's uh, what we face. That's why we are facing the problem now. So, um, I can say for us, um, uh, so oxygen is very, very vital for uh, patients, people. The public sector companies and factories are like oxygen for the country. That's what is demonstrated now. Now, what to do? Now, what they are doing, particularly the central government, total failure on the part of the central government. How? There are two things. Only they are not um, uh, the even the import committee committee has to be set up by the Supreme Court. They have not formed any committee, import committee or anything like that, comprising the important um, uh, bureaucrats and politicians and ministers concerned of uh, ministers of concerned department. They should have formed it much earlier to diffuse the crisis, to assess the need and. Um, and the preparedness of the industries to supply oxygen. That's the one thing. Number two, we have failed in um, uh, distributing. We have not created anything for uh, this, uh, the network of, we have not created any PAKA network for distribution of medical oxygen. And the liquid medical oxygen has to be carried in a specific uh, containers in a specific um, way with the uh, scientific, uh, with uh, all protections, needed protections. That is not there. And also, the from the liquid oxygen plants, it has to be carried in small cylinders, which is also not in, uh, good numbers with us. So, to Israel, total uh, mismanagement or uh, unpreparedness only is reflecting now. So, because, because of this, only the Delhi, in states like Delhi, where there is no oxygen production is there from the industrial side, they are suffering and uh, from other states only we have to supplement and uh, even now the central government is not distributing the oxygen in a transparent way even even today every day they are coming out with uh, uh, piecemeal information about the production and distribution and they are not telling the in total this this much is coming input is there this much we have distributed this much we have keeping as a reserve this much we will expect so many things they can put it in the uh, public domain, but they are not doing. And um, even they are allotting money from the PM cares, which is another uh, uh, um, uh, another question for transparency. So how much they allot and how much is there in PM cares, nobody knows. The ADMK government in the last for the last six months, they have almost they have forgot to about uh, COVID. I can say. And they were very busy with the alliances and um, other things and uh, mopping up operations in all departments. And um, that's what I told you at the beginning itself. They have dismantled a lot of COVID care centers. They should not have done that. And uh, people like uh, our, uh, our um, uh, doctors were demanded all this COVID infrastructure should be maintained at least for one year more. We all demanded, but they did not hear a yes for that. That's why they they could not make any uh, immediate response. They could not uh, make the uh, crisis, face the crisis in the past. Not only government hospitals are facing difficulties, but private hospitals too are in a similar situation. But contrary to the government hospitals, private hospitals are not taking patients in despite the availability of beds, especially those in the high risk category. The reason they state is the lack of medical oxygen. They even direct patients admitted at their hospitals to government medical colleges when their health becomes critical. The new Tamil Nadu Health Minister, Mr. Subramaniam, 
has ensured that appropriate action will be taken against such hospitals. Despite the assurance from the government, these things are still happening even today. The upcoming days will show how the situation will be.